Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fortress of Comic News, episode 61. I am 61. one of your hosts, Chris. This I'm Mike. Is... I'm trying to find my head right now. Hold on. Okay, there it is. Yeah, your head but likes I... to disappear mid-show. It's... Yeah, it's like the I don't the background can't keep up with my sporadic movements. And then, like, when I wear a t-shirt, it just looks like I have no arms. <laughs> and I feel like your background is hinting towards something. Oh, wow, yeah. Today on the show, we have a... Uh... We have a special guest. You want to talk about the special guest, Chris? Maybe. Maybe? Yeah, we got uh, Mr. Ian Flynn on the show. Uh, he'll be on later. We'll let you know that. But we did an interview with him. A lot of fun talking about some of the great stuff he has coming out, that he has out, so on and so forth. Yeah, he's, uh, the, the reason for the background, it's a, it's a Mega Man background for anyone listening to the podcast. Um, but he writes the Mega Man book. He also writes Sonic. He's, gone, he's going over to IDW to write the Sonic books. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that interview. She has some good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Quick housekeeping uh, stuff, um, everybody. So, beginning of this year, I made some goals for Fortress Comic News. Um, and so far, we are demolishing those goals. Demolishing! <laughs> so, I am upping those goals again. But everybody listens to the podcast on iTunes or whatever. If you jump over to youtube.com slash Fortress Comic News and subscribe there it would help us out a ton um we have a lot of cool content over there too i have early reviews coming out top five books to watch and just all around great comic book related content there um really trying to grow that so if you guys if you guys would go over there and all subscribe i would hit my yearly goal tonight based on how many people i know download this video every week or this, I'm sorry, this podcast every week. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and jump over to Fortress Comic News. Remember, everything is there at the hub. And I put up last month an event calendar for us because Mike and I are doing something right around here. And people are inviting us places. But uh, Free Comic Book Day, if you are in Victor, New York, we are going to be at Two Kings Comics. Talking to people, maybe record a show, the whole nine yeah, yards. Yeah, maybe have a giant wheel you could spin. I've always wanted to have a like a table with one of the. You go up to the table like a, a career fair or something. They just have a big like wheel of fortune wheel to spin. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll think about doing that. I'll leave that one up to you. Okay, I, I just want a wheel. That's just okay. my it's my for my personal thing. I just yeah. Okay, you're, you're more than welcome to have a wheel, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to have one, all right? I'm going to do it. <laughs> Damn it. Um, sorry, I don't... Uh, Chris was having a serious... I got to... My head's gone again. Okay, hold on. <laughs> um, Chris was having a serious moment there, and I kind of ruined it. Are you... Uh, is the housekeeping... Is it over now? No, that was it. Yeah, uh, check out YouTube. Oh, okay. Check out the website. Um, yeah. Good. I'm glad. Now let's talk about comics. But first, TV. Oh, yeah, TV. Yeah, We'll talk about TV-related comics. Um, I believe The Walking Dead starts up. Oh, this is... Yeah, this this Sunday. Tonight is Sunday. Um, Walking Dead's back on the air. I almost forgot. So, I did forget. If you didn't tell me that, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah, you have known. I, I feel like I haven't seen it advertised as much as it usually is. Like, usually it's all over the place. The radio, like, billboards, like... Walking Dead comes back tonight. I don't know. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, I like Walking Dead. So there you out. go. Yeah, you could you could do that. Um, CW verse. I'm not caught up on this week. Um, I gotta see if Flash was new. Are you caught up? I think I'm caught up on Flash. Uh, really enjoying yeah. it. Um, Me too. Th- that's really all I have to share. I'm caught up on Arrow, and that's a lot of fun. I, like I said earlier, I stopped uh, watching Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow, and then I still need to check out Black Lightning. I It's been busy around here, but I'm caught up in those two shows. Yeah, I, I really like Black Lightning. Um, I was going to start watching Legends again when uh, when they get Constantine back in the show, because I miss that character. Yeah, he was um, fun. Yeah, so uh, Chris and I watched a couple movies this weekend. Um, we did. He saw Black Panther. I have not seen it yet, but I told him, I gave him permission to do a spoiler-filled review, because it's been, like, what, a week since the movie's been out? Yeah. 
So yeah, so, so spoil the shit out of it. Here we go. So anyone who doesn't know, Black Panther is killing it in the box office. Killing it. Killing it. Um, so overall, I really liked Black Panther. It's uh, it's an origin story, so it automatically gets points off for me there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. This has never been aired. Nobody even knows like who Black Panther is, okay? I, it's one of those situations where, yes, it's a necessary origin story, but I still have just a dislike for origin stories. <laughs> um, but as far as origin stories go, it's done well. Um, it's done really quickly in the beginning. And then yeah. they use the, like any great origin story, something in the origin leads to the main villain. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> everything about it, like the the world that they create, it reminds me a lot of the first Thor when you first saw Asgard. When they go into Wakanda. Done really well. All the acting is fantastic. The action scenes are amazing. Uh, I I don't know what witchcraft Marvel has that they're using on these action sequences, but keep it up. <laughs> Whatever, like, fairy magical dust they're sprinkling yeah. on the film. <laughs> yeah, Tinkerbell dust. <laughs> yeah, t- oh, it's a, yeah, it's all Disney dust, yeah. they call it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and um, uh, Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger was fantastic. Like, he just... Yeah, he's a great actor. Man. Just such a good job, and he's just so menacing. And at the same time, like you kind of feel for him. Like I completely am on his side up until the point where he just like takes over Wakanda. <laughs> and yeah, then he becomes kind of a dictator. Uh, and if you're on the fence of seeing this movie, all I have to say is that there are vibranium covered rhinoceroses. No, there isn't. There is. No way. And why that wasn't in the commercial, I don't know, because they would have doubled the amount of money they made. I would have seen it five times by now. <laughs> so overall, I, oh I really God. liked it. Uh, it's, it's not my favorite Marvel movie. I don't think it cracks my top five, but it's worth seeing and you know, worth your time. If, Where overall. does this movie take place in the timeline? Is this like the most recent of the Marvel movies? Or? It takes place pretty much directly after Civil War because it starts... So they tell the they do this quick sequence where they tell the origin and then they go right into uh, T'Challa being Black Panther and him he does a quick mission and then boom they get into the whole sequence where he becomes king and kind of uh-huh. retell how his father died during Civil War. Uh, there's pretty much no like characters that return as far as heroes like Bucky doesn't show up or anything like that in the movie itself uh claw was fantastic the how they gave him his sound arm was awesome and fit the universe perfectly Mm -hmm. and how he's kind of tied into everything plus i mean apparently claw has a mixtape and i really want to listen to it now because andy (laughs) circus doing a rap (laughs) mixtape sounds amazing come on that's kind of yeah (laughs) So That's overall, awesome. like probably an eight point five out of ten, eight eight point five right. somewhere in there. Really good movie. Great way to start about, the year. How about those after credit scenes, though? What about those? Uh, uh were they, they awesome or they, they were okay? Oh, uh, one was a very Iron Man end credit scene, and the other one was kind of it was necessary to push forward into infinity war but it, it was kind of boring like really quick in and out mm-hmm. so all right um cool we both watched uh gotham by gaslight this weekend we did i uh i liked it a lot i mean it's different than the the comic book plot uh gotham guy by gaslight is one of the first elseworld stories to ever come out for batman where he's, he's taking on uh jack the ripper and I think I really liked it. I, it's rated R, so I mean, obviously, you have Jack the Ripper in the in the in the movie, and he's I mean, he's murdering people, and there's blood everywhere. Uh, I was stunned when there was cursing. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it was interesting. The spoilers for the movie, but the the they wanted you to think that the Ripper was going to be Harvey Dent. Yep. Um, I mean, obviously, the the two he's two faced, right? And they make comments of like, "Oh, you're Jekyll and Hyde. You're, uh, 
you're jealous of Bruce Wayne and all this, all the cool stuff he gets to do. Um, but it ends up being Commissioner Gordon, which is interesting because like they, they may say, okay, yeah, we always know like Commissioner Gordon was in the war. That's why he's like really trained and hard ass. And, um, but he was also a surgeon in, in the war. So he's, I don't know. He's, he's seen a lot of messed up stuff happen. Almost like, like, the, like he had PTSD or something and then kind of went, went crazy after the war. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of deeper story and it made, uh, it made more sense to me that it would be him. Um, and I think it made it really interesting for the story that he, uh, he needed to like kill these people and rid the world of like the filth or whatever he was saying. But I thought it was really good. I, uh, as far as like the animated movies go. Yeah. I, as someone who would, hadn't read the comic before, uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'd love that. All the appearances, the fact that the Ripper's first victim in the movie was Poison Ivy, yeah. and the appearance of Selena Kyle, even though she wasn't Catwoman, she still had the whip, and how her yep. origin was cat-related, yeah. but it was cat-related. The voice acting was fantastic, everything about it was really great, uh, but mm-hmm. if you want more, I did a whole video on it on the YouTube channel, which I'm still waiting, I have a copy of the movie i can give away if people want to go over there and watch it plug shameless plug um yeah so i'd I'd probably give it like an eight or nine out of ten yeah Um, i'd be right there with you yeah the uh interesting movie news um so josh sweden dropped out of the batgirl movie um and i almost i almost wonder if it's all the all the crap he was getting about the Justice League. Yeah, I have to I, imagine. I don't know. Like, I just think that Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment is in disarray right now. Like, it's yeah, it's for crazy. Sure. People keep leaving, coming back. You know, doing this and that. I just heard that they're talking about the Flash movie, and they don't even really have a director uh, settled on it. <laughs> he hasn't signed the dotted line yet. And yet they're in pre-production on it. It's really weird. It's disappointing. Yeah. Uh, And just, there was nobody else outside of, you know, maybe uh, Patty Jenkins or someone I've never heard of that would have been such a perfect fit for that character. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. And I I wonder what that means for Joss Whedon in the future as far as his uh, movie directing career. If he's just done with comic book stuff or... If he did this to move somewhere else, or I don't know, but yeah, no, it's uh, really all we have is Aquaman left, and I, I think, um, I don't know, I don't know what to think, but yeah, he's he's not in the movie anymore, even though it, it probably would have been a, a good placement for him to be on the movie, but um, it didn't seem like his vision and Zack Snyder's vision or the way he wanted to tell the story were really going forward with just it just seems like a kind of messy messy situation for justice league so i don't know if they just wanted to part ways because of that yeah Uh, and i didn't put this in the notes but for all intents and purposes it seems like aquaman's coming around really well it's getting kind of the same praise in the early stages as uh wonder woman got so i have high hopes for that movie yeah i know it's uh I mean, it's Aquaman on the big screen. <laughs> I just always think about Entourage and the huge joke. Of yeah, like, James Cameron's uh, Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, James Cameron's Aquaman. <laughs> Maybe one day. Um, all right, so it looks like we're going to cut to an interview with uh, Ian Flynn, the writer of um, Mega Man and Sonic, and then uh, we'll be back after that. All right. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. We have a very special guest with us this week from Archie Comics, writer of Mega Man, Sonic the Hedgehog, so much stuff. Uh, I can't list it all here, but we have Ian Flynn with us today. Welcome. Hey, hey welcome thank you. you. So, uh, currently, uh, we had a. Uh, we won't get into the background of it, but uh, the rights for Sonic switched over to IDW, and uh, you went with it. So. Uh, Long-time Sonic fans, can they uh, 
Will they be happy with this new series when it comes out here soon? Oh, I sure hope so. My job kind of depends on it. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the beauty of being freelance is I can go wherever the work is, and that's also the terror of freelance is that if there's no work, I'm like out on the savannah hunting, trying to find anything that will provide nourishment. <laughs> but uh, IDW Sonic is built to be just a enjoyable Sonic book. Uh, if you're a fan of the franchise, then you should feel right at home. If you've never touched Sonic remotely in any capacity, you should be able to pick it up and enjoy it. It's just a fun action book. So it's it's got a little bit of everything for everybody. Awesome. Yeah, Sonic's always been a lot of fun uh, throughout the years. So uh, with, with that jump, did your artist come with you, or are you collaborating with someone new this time around? I uh, know all of us on the old book were freelance. Oh, and, cool. uh, I had hoped that maybe one or two would be, be picked up, but a whole slew of them have been rallied by IDW, which is great. Uh, we have Tracy Yardley, who's been on the book for as long as I have, is doing issue number one. Uh, Adam Bryce Thomas, who did Sonic Universe for years, is doing number two. Jennifer Hernandez, who did a number of uh, smaller stories and some of the leads in regular Sonic, is going to be num doing number three. And Evan Stanley, who did a fair amount of regular Sonic work, will be doing number four. That's awesome. That's great to hear. So, yeah, so it sounds like longtime Sonic fans are going to be happy. Uh, with that, um, I mean, any, uh, any plans you can share with us moving forward with it? I mean, are we kind of starting fresh here and telling the origins over again? Or what can we expect from this book? Uh, it is a fresh start in that it doesn't carry anything over from previous comic book runs. So you don't need to read anything previous. You're just It's a new Sonic story. Just straight up. Okay. I, we're not going to dwell too much in the past because I feel like that's one of the things I usually fall back on when I approach Sonic stuff is trying to build the great and expansive history. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> this time, let's just hit the ground running. It's a Sonic book. Go fast. Have fun. And we'll, get, we'll start building upon it from there, but the first four issues are very much about introducing the core cast and the state of the world, and then we'll grow off of that. Uh, to do that, IDW has decided to do the insane thing and launch the first four issues in April. Yeah. So, week after week, you're getting brand new Sonic goodness, and it's been... That's awesome. A, a crazy pace to keep up with, but I absolutely adore it. Hey, it's yeah, it's great they're putting, so many, this, they're putting so many books out, but then it's like, you're, you're kind of under more constraint to, to get that story out, too, though. So... Um, are, are you planning on doing anything else at IDW, or is this just kind of the start with Sonic, and then... I've done a little bit of Ninja Turtle work for him. I did a few stories for Amazing Adventures, and then I've got a two-part story going on right now in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles universe. Ooh, awesome. I'm hoping to do more in the Turtles universe, because while I'm fulfilling the dreams of my eight-year-old self, you know, why not do more <laughs> Turtles? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, That's awesome. when can we expect the uh, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, the Flash crossover event? <laughs> <to hear. laughs> There has to be talks. Someone has to be involved in the talks. I know. Well, I, I am know. doing a small Superman story in the future, so I have a DC connection. Mm -hmm. You might be able to cross them over. There we um, go. I, 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 I mean, now that control we... over that. Please don't spit it that way. I just write what they tell me to write. Yeah, yeah. This um, is not an actual hint. Uh, Please don't get mad at me, editor. People. We're all just having a good time here, folks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, now that now that Chris brought that up, who would win? I mean, who would you think would win, Sonic or the Flash? Oh, now we're gonna have to get super nerdy. I mean, are we talking <laughs> Speed Force involved here? Or yeah, yeah. The, uh, what are the Speed circumstances? Force. Yeah, um, and oh man, no, I don't know. Like wind resistance, no wind resistance in a let's say they're in a resistance free environment. I don't know. <laughs> I, I hate would just to say it because Sonic's my boy, but I think when you get down to the nitty gritty, Flash just is way <laughs> more powerful. He's got he's just like, overpowered. He's I mean the DC characters are more or less demigods, and 
Sonic's got some skill. He's got frictionless, seemingly limitless stamina, but it's he's only like fast. Flash so, is like ridiculous. He, I, I like how you, you you gave him that description there and stuff. And I know like like coming into Sonic, um, starting off when you're writing it, it's it's got to be. I mean, there's some there's some weight there for that character. I mean, a lot of people are really huge fans of the the franchise and the the video game. But was it was it kind of cool or nerve wracking for you to like build upon that universe and like, oh man, what if they don't they don't like the way I went with this or something? Was it kind of how was that how was that starting off and writing it for you? I uh, it's both exhilarating and terrifying because <laughs> it's like you said, the fan base is incredibly passionate. For yeah. good or for ill. Yep. And they're incredibly creative as well. So everybody has their vision of how Sonic should be handled and mm-hmm. where they would want the universe to go and how the characters should interact and grow. So my approach is just a drop in the bucket. Mm-hmm. And I happen to be slightly more official i guess because i'm <laughs> attached to the property but that's yeah. you know by no means ironclad so i've always been a big sonic fan so i've always wanted to explore that world so that aspect of it is not a problem for me i'm playing with all my old toys i have mm-hmm. grand old time mm-hmm. but trying to meet the expectations of such a varied and vocal fan base is <laughs> exhausting sometimes so what yeah. you gotta just buckle down and do is tell the best Sonic story I can and hope it pleases most of the people most of the time. <laughs> yeah, pretty simple job, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, with, with these, I'm, I'm sure lots of fans have reached out to you about how you're doing the books and stuff. So, what's the what's the most common way that they'll reach out to you? They email you, see you a con or something, or handwrite letters? <laughs> how does it work now? Uh, usually, folks will reach out to me on my Twitter Ian oh, okay. Flynn, BKC, but uh, I, the podcast I run, the Bumblecast, we do a Q and A session at the end of every show, and folks write into that all the time, asking questions about nuances and approach to the process, and why did I do this wrong? That's not how you should write it. Well, actually, <laughs> let me let me explain, please. <laughs> yeah, there's always that. There's never like, there's never the oh, you wrote this. The, exactly how I wanted it. It was perfect. Thank you. It's always like, no, you wrote this out. It shouldn't have been. No, no, no. That's the funny thing is I will actually get fan mail that is absolutely glowing. You would think that I had cured cancer. They love it really? so much. Oh, my God. That's, that's honestly more intimidating than the hate mail because it's like, oh, I set your expectations so high. Oh, yeah. Now I can't let you down. Panic, <laughs> panic, panic, panic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I never uh, thought I've also about it that gone way. through, I, when I was working with Archie, uh, what feels like ages ago now, every now and again they would send me these like pillowcase-sized bundles of fan mail to go through. Wow. And, you know, they only published to, North, to the U.S. and Canada, but we'd get mail from Malaysia, from Central Asia, from Thailand, wow. from Saudi Arabia, all over South America... And That's crazy. It, it was. It was absolutely <laughs> astounding. And my favorite yeah. piece of fan mail, I love the story, favorite piece of fan mail is I open it up and there's this like three by five card just covered in crazy scribbles of various colors. And I'm like, okay, this is it. The moment they broke, this is, I can see the picture of where they snapped and they sent this to me. <laughs> what does the letter say? And the letter was uh, something along the lines of, this is from our daughter. She's three years old. This is her first piece of fan art. She wanted you to have it. And it's like, ah! This oh, is man. the most precious and pure thing in the world! I love it! <laughs> this is the most wholesome fan mail I've ever gotten. Oh my god. <laughs> I always come back to that on a bad day. It's like, you know what? I'm doing something right. Yeah, I have been so- rewarded by the cosmos. That is so awesome. So you said you've always been a fan of Sonic. So I want to tilt the conversation a little bit. Have you always been a fan of Mega Man? <laughs> Mega Man was something I never got into, number one, because I couldn't afford all the games, and because I had a <laughs> Genesis, and there wasn't that many Mega Man games to put, call from. I know there was Wily Wars, but I never got onto that one. Yeah. And yeah. also because I am notoriously bad at Mega Man. It's Me like too. It's shamefully bad. I'm terrible. <laughs> but I've so always bad. had an appreciation for the franchise, because it's Mega Man. 
Yeah, he's like yeah. he's one of the pantheon. He's right up there with Mario and Sonic. Yep. For so sure. when we got the book, I made a point of researching as much as possible. You know, multiple fan wikis, multiple playthroughs, not just speed runs because you don't get a good feel for what the game is supposed to be, mm-hmm. but like no. amateur run throughs, full playthroughs. You know, what does the stage look like? What does that mean? Why are they even there? The boss has, you know, these two very simple attack animations. What does that mean about the character? <laughs> What's the deeper meaning to the giant boomerang? What is <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, How does that make everyone feel? <laughs> obscure Japanese trivia. It's like, okay, Guts Man loves karaoke. Beautiful. <laughs> Work it in there somewhere. Well, that's amazing yeah, exactly. because as I've been a long time Mega Man fan, I've played almost every version of Mega Man you can think of, and I absolutely adore that series. It was... It did a really great job of keeping the kid feel that Mega Man should have while really taking the source material seriously. So hats off to you for all that research then. Thank um, you very much. So then you got you did all that research, you went in. What was the reception you got from that? Were you did you get people like me who were you know saying you did a great job or how did that book go over for you? That one was very starkly, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Mm-hmm. I never saw a lot of middle ground. Either folks absolutely adored it the way you know you do. You did do pick a conjugation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you got what I was trying to do with it. You mm-hmm. know, take yes. this very simple run, right, shoot robot and expand upon it because there's so much lore. There's so much good, needy story stuff to dig into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there were other folks who absolutely hate it. They think it's way off base in terms of tone. They think the pacing is all wrong. They think the characters are way off. They hate it. Like, But there's no middle ground. I've never mm-hmm. seen someone say, eh, hey, it's all right. It's either this is the pinnacle of all things Mega Man or kill Ian. <laughs> yeah, those are both yeah. polar opposites. <laughs> so then to uh, swing it back to Sonic... Uh, I mean, what was it like when the crossovers happened? Was that something that you brought up and pushed, or was that something yeah. that Archie kind of pushed for? So that was a pretty big deal at the comic shop when that was going down, I remember. Oh, yeah. I okay. remember the talks, the talks happening. Oh, yeah. I love the story. I love the story. So, <laughs> you know, Capcom came to Archie with the idea of a Mega Man book because they saw of what we had done with Sonic mm-hmm. and said, give him the same treatment. So we did that, and we had great success. Then it was Capcom who came forward and said, hey, you've got the licenses to both, why not a crossover? Oh, man. And so Archie went to Sega and said, can we go play in their yard for now, please? (laughs) And Sega was like, yeah, that sounds cool, go for it. It was that simple. It was that straightforward. That is awesome. Because I'm a super nerd, I had already kind of drafted a crossover idea. (laughs) (laughs) He already had one ready. (laughs) It was never going to happen. It was just, you know, to satisfy me. Why not? Tee hee, here's my semi official fan fiction. Ha ha. Oh, wait, it's real now? (laughs) Ah! Ah! Panic! Make it work! Make it awesome! And, oh man, that came together so nicely. I love those 12 issues. That's one of my most favorite pieces. That came together so nicely. Yeah, and that was um I, I remember that's when I, I kind of jumped in and started reading some of them for a while there was during the crossover because that, that's when I, I heard about it the most. I was like, oh, man, you can't pass up Sonic and Mega Man crossing over. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's like, you take all the money. About it. Yeah, so were you a, were you a, uh, I mean, must have been a huge gamer growing up. I mean, you playing your Sega Genesis all the time and. Uh, what I could afford. Mm-hmm. Uh, most, mostly my games were supplied by saved up lunch money. <laughs> uh, I did end up like saving for months in advance to get a Dreamcast mm-hmm. until my dad stepped in and said, look, you're becoming malnourished because you're not using your lunch money. <laughs> I'll go in and have these with you. Just eat again. <laughs> but I had to have Sonic Adventure Man that, that needed to be in my house. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was I'd say stupid. I'm more of a gamer now that I've had more time to dedicate to it. But mm-hmm. I think there are more folks who are more avid into the, uh, the hobby, the lifestyle. How do you want to classify mm-hmm. that? Yeah, yeah. I'm Both. appreciative of the video games. <laughs> there you go. That's that's the best way to approach it. I think. <laughs> so then, um, I mean, we'll stick with video games for a little bit. You just, I mean. 
actually last month I think it was announced that you're working with Dark Horse to do an arms comic book. Yeah. Well, what's an arms comic book? <laughs> <laughs> I've played the game, but what's the comic? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Arms is one of those things where the basic game, if you just glance at the surface, is neat. It's got a fun gimmick. The characters are really charming. The music's funky. The aesthetic is really pleasing. But you wouldn't think there's much to it. But as you dig deeper, there's actually a lot more lore to it. And when I was brought onto the project, I was given a couple of series Bibles. And I was like, oh, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Wow. And they've been slowly trickling that out with the updates. So Hmm. what the graphic novel series will be... And I can't go into too much detail because it's still way early on it, but mm-hmm. it will be what I'm going to aim to do. Let me see, make sure I phrase this right so it doesn't go all over the internet. And you know, <laughs> Ian said, Flynn said this. And yeah. said, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm going to try to capture the same kind of lighthearted fun that is ARMS while bringing up all of this background information that you wouldn't necessarily know, especially if you're just a casual player of the game. Mm-hmm. There's a huge world to explore there, and it's bright, and it's colorful, and it's bombastic, and it's got this slight undercurrent of a sinister edge, and it's really made for some interesting character dynamics, hmm. and I had a ton of fun writing it up so far. Well, I'll tell awesome. you, it, not to put too much pressure on you here, but um, the fact that Nintendo is coming out and actually doing this kind of thing was shocking to me on its own, even though it's you know, quote, not to discourage arms, but it's just arms. It makes me happy to know that they're willing to work with American comic companies on projects that maybe in the future will get more if, you know, this is taken well. So yeah. good luck to you. <laughs> um, and so I'm, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but I'm like, wow, I, I feel the way over here. When yeah. that was announced, I was because I've played ARMS a few times, uh, not necessarily my gig, but uh, my stepsons go nuts for that game because it's so. It's one of those games that's simple to play, hard to master, and uh, kids can jump right in and play. But when I heard that, like, like you said, it seemed like there's not much there other than my imagination going wild as to how these people got these weird arms and <laughs> what this world's what's going on in this world. So that just got me excited. I want to know what's, what you have uh, going on in the background there. Well, that's one of the exciting things about the project is that there is a story behind how folks develop the coiled arms and what it means for the world and how it's played into their history and how it plays into their socioeconomic structure. Wow. And it, this isn't stuff I'm making up. This is stuff yeah. I'm legit building off of what Nintendo has already come up with. Oh, and I crap. love the fact that I get to explore it. Yeah. And Nintendo has been super cool with the way I've approached their property. So the whole thing has been an absolute delight. That's awesome. That's, awesome. That's that, so cool. That makes me happy to know Nintendo had this already worked out. <laughs> so, uh, lastly, uh, I got to talk about Cosmo. So yeah, I've I really dug the first issue. Um, the second issue is still sitting by my bed, but I, I just think it's a really great science fiction all ages story that I had no idea was a uh, existing character. I actually did a video on it and called it a uh, original idea from you, <laughs> and found out <laughs> later that it was uh, existing uh, Archie product. So. You know, what's tell the people all about that book and why they should be reading that. Well, Cosmo, as it is right now, is a limited series. It's a sci fi action comedy. It follows a crew of Martians who end up rescuing this semi oblivious human astronaut, <laughs> and together they get embroiled in this insane scheme that takes place on an amusement park on the moon. Which is about as succinct as I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. and wow, <laughs> it's it's very much updated for today's readers because the original six issue Cosmo run was back in nineteen fifty eight. I want to say, yeah, a little dated. 
Which is why I've yeah. never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it was only six issues. It was very slow paced. It was definitely a product of its time. Mm-hmm. But what I love about classic Cosmo is that it is unapologetically insane. <laughs> Anything goes on that book. And so I tried to capture the spirit of that with the revamp so that it's it's got a tighter story. It's got stronger characterization. It's, again, updated for the times, but it's also no holes barred, anything goes. Absolutely anything is possible in this universe. And the the human character, Max Strongjaw, is kind of your window into this insanity because he has the perspective, as we do on Earth, of what we understand of the universe. And he learns very quickly that he's completely wrong. <laughs> so as everything just falls apart and goes nuts around him, he's like, no, why? And everyone else is like, eh, that's how it is. <laughs> this is normal. That's why awesome. are you going nuts? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's great. I, ho- I hope that one go, uh, picks up. because that, that first issue was so much fun. Um, that's one of the things I've always loved about reading your books is that they're fun. And it's a, a word that isn't used enough in comics nowadays. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah. My philosophy is... You know, there's so much crap going on in the world. Let the comic let you escape from it for like maybe ten minutes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Exactly. There, there are comics out there that address bigger issues and tell important stories, and those are valuable. You know, the mm-hmm. medium should be used in that way. But at the same time, there needs to be room for media that just lets you relax because you need some downtime. And yeah. You know, I'm not the best in the world, but I think I can get you that five minutes of just brain <laughs> shut off mode, and that's valuable. That that's great because I mean, Chris and I talk when we review our comics for the week and stuff. I'm always I'm always picking up books that are like I need to have in my in my pull list because it's like every week it's like oh man, here's more people punching each other in the face and okay, now we're solving political issues. It's like sometimes I just need like a fun book to like not think about. <laughs> <laughs> or just or just be like you know not deep in thought or get depressed from reading or something it's like yeah it's nice to have that change so um other than that i mean is there anything else you got going on right now any any other projects that i missed on okay so um if you want to follow what i've got going on have head over to my website bumbleking.com yeah that's for everybody out there who wants to follow what I'm doing, what my show appearances are going to be. And it's also kind of my handy reference because I lose track of it <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> uh, right now, also with Archie, I've got Mighty Crusaders, which will be wrapping up its limited run in March. Yep. Which okay. is a very back to basic superhero book. Awesome. Um, yeah, nothing, not to knock the big two, but sometimes <laughs> they get a little. Uh, what's the kindest word? Convoluted? It, it's hard yeah. to just jump right in. Yep. Yeah, well, let's, uh, we can talk. Is, we can talk. We can talk like five hours about the continuity of Hawk, <laughs> Hawkman and like where his origin really took place. So, yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> I mean, Mighty Crusaders doesn't reinvent the wheel, but you don't need to. It's just fun superhero stuff. It's got a little more edge to it than some of the other stuff I've done, but yeah, that's fun too. Hmm. Uh, starting in June, we've got Super Teens versus Mighty Crusaders, where we revive the old Archie <laughs> Super Teens, if you're familiar with those. I forgot about that book, yeah. They're, that That's fun. That's yeah. a fun little property. That's going to be a lot of fun. Those Archie uh, superheroes are just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one segment in particular that I'm really happy how it came together because it's just, I was cracking up as I was writing it. <laughs> That's uh, always a good sign. Like I mentioned, I've got a small Superman story showing up in Superman Special, which is, shoot, October, I think. Oh, okay. No. Uh, I've got the arms thing with Dark Horse. I'm also working with them to complete the exhaustive Super Mario Brothers encyclopedia. That's not really a comic, but. Yeah, it's video games, it's trivia, it's fun stuff. They do a great That's job on those, too. And I'm sure I'm forgetting some other stuff. There's some original projects that I would love to plug, but they're still 
so early in development, it's like, hey, look at this thing that might be out <laughs> by winter. I don't know. <laughs> so if everyone wants to hear about those original products, where can they follow you on Twitter? Uh, head over to at Ian Flynn BKC, or like I said, BumbleKing.com. That's yeah. Bumble like the bee, king like the reigning monarch, or just Google Ian Flynn. It'll show up easy enough. Yep, and also check out uh, BumbleCast. BumbleCast is always a lot of fun. Uh, listen yep, to that's every, every other Monday, patreon.com backslash BumbleCast. There you go. So, Ian, awesome. thanks for being on the show. It was great having you, and uh, I look forward to all these projects you have coming out. Thank yeah, you for having me. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks again hey. to Ian Flynn. That was awesome. Yeah, what a great interview. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's... Uh, we got quite a bit of comic book news this week, which is... it's only, I mean, it's unusual, right? Uh, we, we It's been all quiet on the... the for like a couple weeks, but now we got a, a bunch of stuff announced. Um, we got a mini-series for Lando coming out that's going to be a tie into the solo movie, which I'm actually pretty excited for. I think I might actually get this book. Yeah. Uh, the, the old Lando uh, five part series is really good too. Yeah. And I remember that really enjoyed it. it. So when they announced this and that it was tying into the movie is like, well, my ongoing thing has been, if it says star Wars in the title, I'm going to buy at least issue one and try it out. I <laughs> exactly, haven't been disappointed yeah. yet with Marvel star Wars books. So, and, um, yeah, so it'll be a tie into the solo movie. It'll be interesting because I, I already, I mean, I love the way I, I love Donald Glover, and I think he looks awesome as Lando. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah, he's everything I've seen uh, with him looks fantastic. Speaking yep. of Marvel, did you know hey. that they're going to have a fresh start? No, is it like a number one fresh start? Or? Yes. <laughs> so, so it's an all new. All number one fresh start Marvel. So, <laughs> yeah. Let's get into What do you this. think about this? Chris is a Marvel fan, so I want to know his take on what he thinks about the fresh start. Once again, I did a video on this already, but I'll get into it. Uh, I, I don't get it. Like, it, it's... What, what the is the need for it? Fourth or fifth, quote unquote, you know, renumbering or reboot in five or six years. It... It's, I just don't get it. It's, I was yeah. so happy when they went to legacy numbering and we're just like, we're doing this and this is what it is. And it seems now like that was just a ploy to get those big anniversary numbers uh -huh. and get quick sales. And now they're going straight back to the well of, well, uh, number one, fresh start. <laughs> I, so there's things I like and things I don't like about it. I, I don't like it because I'm just a long time Marvel fan and I'm kind of burn out with this you know first it was marvel now and then it's all new all different marvel and all new marvel and now it's marvel fresh start and uh, it's just it's hurting my brain <laughs> yeah uh but at, the things i do like about it is it seems like they're taking a lot of books and kind of uh refreshing them putting new creative teams on it so i mean we can jump into those uh they yeah, let's talk about those three books to start it off um, at least two of them I can guarantee you I'm getting. And one oh, yeah. is uh, Venom by Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. Now, I could kind of care less about Venom, but yeah, I love Donny Cates, so <laughs> I'm yep. going to try it out. And Ryan Stegman's an awesome artist. Um, he's done a lot of Spider-Man over the years, so I'm really looking forward to that. I might even check that out because I like Donny Cates a lot now. Yeah, and his... <laughs> His demeanor and like how he's done his book so far at Marvel, he might be able to pull it off where most people, not so much. Yeah. Uh, one that I'm not so excited about, but I'm kind of happy because it satiates the fans of this book is uh, they're, you know, they're doing Black Panther again. They're just doing it as a number one. And Ta-Nehisi Coates is writing it, and he wrote the previous Black Panther. And then uh, Daniel Kuna is doing the art, and people who like Black Panther really love that series and talk highly about it. So that's good. I'm glad that those fans are going to continue to get someone they enjoy. And then the big one for me, the I will buy a hundred times over book is Avengers, and Jason Aaron's taking it over. And mm -hmm. if that's not good enough, Ed McGinnis is doing the art in it. Yeah, that's pretty huge. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna get big. 
beefy muscular Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> like like they've all been doing their squats, you know. <laughs> and all their power, all the powerlifting adventures. And I love it because when he talked about it, he said, you know, if you've read Thor, he jumps from the present to the future all the time. Well, in this book, he wants to do the jump from the present to the past, and it's going to tie into his book, Marvel Legacy, where we saw the Avengers BC. So uh, we're going to get more of the Avengers BC and how that ties into the current Marvel oh, man. universe. Was that when they had Ghost Rider riding a flaming mammoth? That is indeed when they had Ghost Rider. Oh man, he just loves doing crazy. St- or old. I mean, that's the Donny Cates did uh, uh, um, Ghost Rider as Punisher, but I think Ghost Rider riding a mammoth probably tops that. Yeah, I feel like because those two are friends, I guess. You th- oh, okay. So, so they I must feel like they just sit in a room and are like, "What's the most fucked up way we can use Ghost Rider?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's awesome. I might even read that too. I, uh, Ed McGinnis is a fantastic artist, and hey, it's an all-new number one, so I might as well give it a shot, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> hopefully, it's good. It's That's fresh, all I gotta say. Is hopefully one. it's good. I mean, I have yeah. faith because Jason Aaron is an amazing writer. So, so we have Chris Samney is leaving Marvel after Captain America seven hundred. So, how many more issues is that? Um, that'll be let's see, here. two more issues. And you're really liking him on Captain America? I love Chris Samney. Uh, I've loved him for a while, and especially since he teamed up with Mark Wade, he did uh, probably one of the best Daredevil runs in a long time with him. And then uh, I didn't read his Black Widow run, but I want to pick it up. And then I really liked him with Captain America. Uh, he has that like pop art style that um, Mike Allred made really popular. Mm. And... It sucks. <laughs> He's such a good artist, yeah. but I guess his contract is over and he wants to move on and do something different. So hopefully he does something cool. So this is probably a really big piece of news. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's they said they want to do it, but um, Scott Snyder and Jason Aaron uh, will be writing Avengers, uh, Justice League and Avengers respectively. Uh, but they've talked about that they want to do a crossover event. Yeah, which how, hasn't happened. How awesome is that? Which hap- hasn't happened since George Perez's Avengers Justice League Avengers. So that is pretty awesome. What's even more crazy is like people on the Marvel side, like former editors and current editors, have all been like cheering this on. Yeah. So it like actually has some weight to it, but I don't see it happening. Like I think when it gets to the higher ups, it'll just fall flat. But the idea. Of those I think, two, I think if anyone was to put the kibosh on it, it would be uh, DC. I don't think just because of like the sales right now. I feel like DC is is definitely has one up over Marvel for comic sales, and Mar- and Marvel I think would see this as a great thing, to, a great opportunity, right? Um, but I don't know if I was DC, I, I I mean either way, do it. Like it makes so much money. Oh my god. Yeah, and. It, it's tough to save with sales because it's so like if you look at this or that, either one could be winning. But like the DC is definitely in terms of overall profit winning the battle, and yeah. even with that, it's like let's say it's a four issue series. Like Marvel publishes issue one, DC two, so on and so forth. Oh yeah, and that's a good idea. Everybody that reads comics is going to read this book. Yeah, like. Both companies have so much money they can make off of this. It's not even funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would be so awesome. Just think about that. Like, you get you can get Donny Cates to come over and write, like, a minute, like a one shot event book with, like, Greg Capullo doing the art. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Like, there's no artists uh, that are talking about this that I'm aware of. Like, so yeah, what, what if, like, oh, Capullo comes in. Yeah. Ivan Reese well, does something. Originally, with like with Justice League Avengers, they had George Perez do all the art because he was the only artist that had that had done Marvel and DC. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know who they would pick. I would just have Alex Ross do all the art, dude. 
Well, yeah, in a perfect world, I would have Adam yeah. Frost do everything. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's technically done uh, Marvel and DC. Yeah, I would just have him do all the art, no big deal. <laughs> that would never happen, but yeah, that's what I would dream. Pick. We can dream. Yeah. Um, okay, so, and it seems that now that Josh Whedon's got a little extra time in his hands, uh, he's going to be writing another Buffy comic series, season 12. Yeah, do you like I know Buffy? That had a, uh, and I couldn't really get into it. I think it was just because it was dated from like trying to watch it, and it it just I don't know. Yeah, I, don't think it I, well. I don't really care about Buffy either, but yeah, for me, so there's a big more, fan base. I really want Joss Whedon to get back into comics. Yeah, like I hope he's just sick of Hollywood and it's like oh, let's just go back to reading or um, writing comics all the time. And, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I know there's a big following for the Buffy comic, so oh, a huge audience. Um. All right, what we're reading, I actually, I tried out a new book this week, uh, Bloodborne number one came out, which is, uh, when the Dark Souls comic series came out, I'm a huge fan of all those games, uh, that I didn't, I couldn't get into the Dark Souls one, because it was just, it was too, uh, too much of a structured story for me, because if anybody knows the Souls series games, there's not a whole lot of obvious plot to it, um, there's... Uh, a lot of stuff that's left up to speculation as far as like the war and you need to you need to read a lot of different stuff to actually get a picture of the universe and what's actually happening in the story um same thing with bloodborne so bloodborne came out and the art is really good the story is somewhat obscure i mean uh i don't know if this takes place like i think it's the current timeline is like if you were starting the game um, because we get we see the hunter die in the issue, but then he gets reborn at the in the hunter's dream, which is like where you kind of respawn when you die in the game. Um, but he's in search of this like cursed child, or basically this the difference between Bloodborne and the Souls games is like Bloodborne's almost like a like a steampunk era, mm-hmm. where all these people are turning into beasts and becoming like werewolves and stuff. So there's there seems to be more about that. Uh, more story development about why these people are turning into beasts and why this kid is the chosen one, basically. Um, it, it was a good s- start to the plot. Obviously, they had to give some type of focus on the story, which seems to be this kid. Um, I like how they they didn't kind of ignore the fact that, like, if you die, you come back. Like, it's that's part of the plot is, like, you, you are, you're kind of trapped in purgatory or something like that, but um, you know, any game you die and you respond like Mario and Halo and all that stuff, but this actually is part of the plot that they kind of ignored with, I think, the, the original Dark Souls comic series. So I like that they're addressing it as... And it's somewhat obscure, too. There's They're not giving a whole lot away. There's not a whole lot of dialogue, which is the way I wanted to read a Dark Souls book, or a, a Dark Souls or Bloodborne book. So yes, I highly recommend it to anyone who's a, a, a fan of that series. Um... Batman 41 came out this week. Uh, it was the um, second half of... Uh, what the hell is the name of that story? It was... Oh, man. I got it on the tip of my tongue. Oh, I got it open right now. Basically, it's... Oh, no, it's... I'm sorry. It's the start of the Ivy series. Yeah, I was excited oh, for this. Okay. Um. I haven't. We haven't seen Poison Ivy in the Batman comic in a while, and it's a really interesting version of her. Um, basically, she she has control over the green like swamp thing, and um, it the the issue is like Bruce Wayne waking up and Catwoman waking up and them realizing that uh, something's not right, and basically Ivy takes control of everyone in the world. But Batman had a protocol in place because he's Batman for when this was happening. So he like injects himself and uh, Catwoman with the serum to so everybody in the world has changed except them those two. Um, basically, she says she's going to make the world a perfect place, and that there's no there's no cure for it for what she did to everybody. Um, but there's this awesome scene in the comic, and it was super exciting. So she. She basically has control over everyone in the world, right? Every superhero. So uh, she make, she appears to um, she appears to them as Alfred, like in the room, and like talks to them. And and then she like 
she can control anybody, so you don't know like who she, who she is or what she's going to do. So they wake up in their costumes, and um, they wake up in bed in their costumes because what happened was they originally wake up in the in the story, and they they run down to the Bat Cave. He injects both of them, and then they wake up in their like uniforms. Like, how the hell did we get here? Oh yeah, we were like fighting off Ivy and had to inject ourselves. Um, so Alfred reveals himself that it's not Alfred, and Bruce gets up to punch him in the face. And she uses the flash to run in and block the punch with his face. <laughs> like, cause she can control everybody. So she, he goes to punch him and the flash zooms in, like out of nowhere, no context at all, zooms in, decks him in the face and knocks the flash out. <laughs> and he's still standing there like, like, oh, and then he's like, Alfred goes, would you like to try that again? I, I have a couple more flashes available to use. <laughs> Like, oh man, Tom King, dude. You know some scenes that are just like there's too good. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna use Flash to block a punch. Ah, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, so that's really exciting. Uh I'm I'm really excited to see Poison Ivy as a as a main villain. Uh there's been too much focus on Joker and Two Face. Um Superman forty one was the second part to the two part of uh a story about him and uh, John, his son, going out to this um, to this planet that's about to die, like Krypton was, and they tell them that they can save him. But this this planet already worships the fact that the planet's going to explode, and um, they can't really change their minds. So basically, it leads to like one of the scientists on the planet knows that they're all going to die, gives them these eggs to put on another planet to rebuild the society. So everybody kind of wins. Superman feels good about building the new society. The people on the planet that died feel good because they're worshiping their gods that whatever on that planet. And then there's a conversation with like Superman and uh, John at the end, which is kind of interesting about like, do you believe in God? And is there a higher power and all this stuff? So it got kind of real at the end, <laughs> um, which I don't think we've ever seen an interaction between like Superman and his son and like them talking about like, do we believe in a higher power? Cause it's like some people think that we are the higher power. Um, yeah. So that was a really good uh, issue. And I believe that was it for me this week. Cool. Uh, I got a few from last week cause I got behind last week, but oh, okay. uh, I will start off with last week with Captain America six ninety eight. So cap was frozen in a block of ice again and sung to the far <laughs> future. Uh, <laughs> It's actually not Again. that far away as you think. And uh, the the neo-Nazi group that he's been fighting, they kind of take over and change everything. And there's like freedom fighters that he meets and he just decides that he has to try to empower them to bring America back, as they say. Um, it's Mark Wade writing it, so you know there's a, a nice hint of political uh, realism in there that he, <laughs> at least as he of sees course. it. Yeah, there always is. Um, and then you talked about last week, but Dark Knight's Rising, The Wild Hunt. I really love this issue. Uh, the ending that we didn't yeah. talk about last week was fantastic. Yeah, we can finally um, talk about the ending, how the, the, chimp, the chimp universe comes to save them. Yeah, and I don't know, this was talked up by i we have a mutual friend who doesn't really care for Zack snyder and this was talked up as grant morrison fixing everything snyder supposedly messed up and i don't think mm -hmm. it's that at all i think it was grant morrison adding on to what Zack snyder was or yeah Zack snyder, scott snyder was already doing here and uh, i can't wait to see how it ties into issue six yeah it was um, really good marvel two and one number three so it's been a minute since I read this, but yeah, so Doctor Doom shows up and he's behind something here, and I, I don't really know where this is going because you got Doctor Doom doing stuff in the background, you got uh, Johnny and Thing meeting up with Hercules, and they're definitely getting closer to figuring out where in the multiverse Reed is and going mm -hmm. there. Uh, the book is still beautiful and I highly recommend it. And if you've never read anything Infinity, uh, I've got a book for you. Infinity Countdown Prime number one. 
Wow. So this is Marvel's big event coming up, Infinity Countdown. And we start off with Wolverine fighting a bunch of um, Ultrons. And after he yeah. kicks the shit out of them, Loki shows up. So what does Wolverine do? He stabs him through the bottom of his neck and hits two of his claws into Loki's eyeballs. Yo, that's crazy. And pins him down. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's fucking nuts. And this kind of sets up the table to where things are moving into Infinity Countdown. And what's also mm-hmm. great is there's a cool primer in the background for anybody that's never read anything Infinity to kind of tell you what each of the stones are and what they do and what their past is. And I thought that was really cool of them to do. Um, yeah, I've read, I've read Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War. Yeah, both yep. great books. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got Brave and the Bold, Batman and Wonder Woman. Did you get this? No, I, I was meaning to read that. Uh, how was it? I didn't care for it. Uh, no? Okay, I'm kind of <laughs> glad I missed it. Did it, it. It didn't capture the Brave and the Bold style? I was really looking forward to it because it had to do with Celtic gods. Uh-huh. And that's not something you see much in comics yeah. or in any medium, for that fact. And I really, just at a certain point, I couldn't get through it. Like, the, the writing was so off on it for me. And, like, one of the gods finds uh, Steve Trevor and Wonder Woman in Ant- Antarctica. Like, basically just Steve having Trevor. sex constantly. And, like, pops in on them, like, mid-coitus. Oh, man. It is really weird and... I don't know. Uh, I'm taking it off my list. I didn't care for it, personally. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of glad I missed out. Yeah. There. And then I got Mighty Thor number seven, uh, 704. Mm-hmm. And uh, Magog is fucking shit up in Asgard. <laughs> and Of course. Through all this, uh, the hammer is trying to get back to uh, Jane Foster, and she keeps rejecting it. And eventually, she just says, okay, picks it up and goes to save Asgardia. Um, and if you're reading Mighty Thor, you know that she was told that if she picks up the th- hammer one more time, she's going to die. Because every time she grabs the hammer, it cleanses her body. The problem with that is is she has cancer. And so if she goes and has chemotherapy and is pumped full of poison, the hammer is cleansing all the chemotherapy drugs out of her body. Mm-hmm. So... This runs fresh into the storyline where we get the death of her. Damn. Um, but the book is fantastic, although deep. And then I got a few review books. So if you go to your comic shop this week, uh, you'll see Brilliant Trash from Aftershock by Tim Seeley, um, issue number four. Now, admittedly, I hadn't read issue one, two, or three, so mm-hmm. it was tough to get into. But once I got in and kind of read it, it was quite a bit of fun it was a different kind of superhero story where like a company had found the formula for superheroes essentially and used them for their own bidding and i mean it was fun if you like if you really like superhero stuff it might be worth picking up i get the feeling though it's one of those books that would be better suited for uh trade waiting personally yeah yeah and then a very early review and as has been the theme for me in this uh, episode I did a video on this already but uh, Betrothed number one is coming out next month this is also from Aftershock uh, by Sean Lewis and Steve Yu it's a sci-fi teen romance Hmm. but good (laughs) <laughs> it's got a very like young adult feel like Romeo and Juliet yeah. with space faring people and uh-huh. uh, basically there are these two people on earth that find each other and feel like they're connected and they find out that they're actually from an alien race but they're on the alien race is split into two tribes one in which worships the old ways and magic and one that worships the new ways and science and uh they constantly collide so they find out that they're connected and they find out that's why they're connected is because they're both kind of the heads of that their tribes on a different planet it's that's cool pretty cool pretty unique uh 
I would suggest picking it up when it comes out. It's was definitely worth a read. Awesome. And yeah, I got that too. I just I, I'll have to check it out this week. Yeah, you have to let me know what you think. Mm-hmm. That's everything. So, Mike. All right. Where can the fine people out there find you? You could uh, you can find me at Ricker Six Two One, as usual on Instagrams. I'm there. I'm uh, yeah. Where can they find you, Chris? You can find me on Instagram at Fortress News Chris or Twitter at Fortress Chris, and then the show at FortressComicNews.com, as we said earlier, and um, on Twitter for the show at FCN underscore Official. And uh, if you're so inclined, um, review the podcast on iTunes or whatever service you're using. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember to give us a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Helps us out a ton. And you get a bunch of cool content that we make here. And, uh, yeah, patreon.com slash Forge Comic News. Support us there. And uh, I think that's everything. All right, thanks, guys. I think we're good. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody.